welcome back everyone. So uh, this week I'm going to take you back up to the Monongahela. Uh, this is a trip I took about, a, mm, I want to say almost two months ago. Uh, we It was a day that was snow was forecast, um, and it ended up being a beautiful day, initially. I don't go into that much, but this snowstorm that they had uh, predicted, just it, it didn't happen, and it fell away. But um, regardless, I did get photographs. I did um, get a chance to travel around and see some snow, etc., for a few hours. Um, was it worth the six-hour round trip to get a couple hours, a few hours of some snow? Yeah, probably not, but regardless. Um, I got one photograph I really liked and one that, meh, I'm not, I'm not so hot on. Um, got another iteration of the first one, so we'll talk about the differences there. Also, we'll talk some today about uh, photographic celibacy, um, creativity, and influence from stuff you've seen, and how that um, can, can influence your work in really positive ways, in my opinion. Um, now, photographic celibacy, it's, it's a touchy subject for people. Um, understand these are all my opinions, and my opinions don't matter to anyone, even myself at times. Um, that said, we're going to do that. And at the end of the video, so stick around after the video, and we're going to talk about the photographs. And um, if I have time before this video goes live, we'll actually talk about a print too. And we'll look at the print and we'll talk about how I made the print, why I made the print the way I did, etc. All right. Enough of my jabbering. Let's get this video started. Welcome again, everyone. I, uh, I've come back up to West Virginia because, well, more snow. And this is where I chase the snow. Um, real quick, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this. And share it with people if you enjoy it. All right, that said, we're setting up this beautiful Rock Valley here. Um, Rock Valley. I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about. Alright, so this will just be the first shot. Very simple shot. Easy. I'm placing the valley up there in the middle. And I'm uh, using these trees on the bottom as a foreground. Um, and then the two sides have a line that draws your eye down and shows you what to look at. In other words, it takes your eye to the focal point. That simple. Almost feels like a winter painting from the 1800s. Uh, I have frozen the snowflakes to some degree at 1 40th of a second because they're coming down very slowly and uh, yeah man this is better than the other day <laughs> I'm telling you West Virginia has become my new my new love for winter weather all right I'm gonna do a 200 ISO 1 60th of a second and really try to freeze the snowflakes all right I think we got this one. Um, I'm pretty pleased with this. This is just my first shot of the day, and 
I've just been driving around. I mean, it takes about three hours to get here. So in this kind of weather, I leave later because I know it's going to do this all day. So I don't have to get up too darn early. Now I'm going to do one where the, where the shutter is dragging. And we'll see if we can uh, get these snowflakes moving. Oh, you're getting water on the lens, of course. With that. Ooh, got a lot brighter. All right. So we're going to... Snow is now going the other direction. Drag the shutter just a hair. What does that do? Yes, it gives us that slight amount of movement. It's always fun. So when I look for these types of compositions, I'll be driving down the road and looking off to the sides and, and thinking about what I'm seeing. And I frequently try to remember landscape painters, landscape photographers from the past, just to get my brain to click in to what I'm seeing. I'm clearly not doing it like somebody else, but, oh, there's the sun coming out. How weird is that? I'm clearly not doing it exactly like somebody else, but I am seeing these compositions sometimes because I have seen them in the past. It can be a good way to help yourself find compositions. I, uh, for a long time I was a, a photographic celibacy supporter. And what that means is I just didn't look at any other people's work for a while. But then I realized that wasn't working. I mean... I, There's a lot of ins and outs of that whole photographic celibacy thing. But for me, I find I just like to look at other people's work. I like to know what's going on. And if I'm inspired by something I see because I saw another photographer do something similar, more power, man. It might have been something I would have missed otherwise. So I think we got this. Let's continue on. I'm hopefully, hopefully going to go down to Spruce Knob today. Well, we'll see if that happens. All right. Let's get out of here. Let's go see what else we can come up with. driving around in the countryside up here for a little while now and I uh, saw this memorial cemetery up on a hill and I thought well that that can't be bad um, and so here I am with this beautiful stratified view of uh, the farmland I love the way the lines go stack 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 I may switch off this long lens. It's too long. <laughs> oh, boy. I find that I use between 70 and 100 a lot. So today I decided to leave the 70 to 200 at home. And now I'm wondering if that wasn't a mistake. Because I sure would like to get something at about 90 millimeters over there. 80, 85 millimeters. I'm waiting for another snow squall to come through. But... I think I found something if uh, if I can get it to work. I'm gonna have all the sun coming out. That's bad. That'll melt the snow faster than you can say snap. But it looks like it might have another squall coming through. All right, so two stop. Medium edge, neutral, neutral density graduated filter. 
All right, so I've actually put the sun directly in the composition at the very top, which will sort of anchor the top of the composition. And then we'll have, you have sky with some clouds across the top of the ridge of the mountains. And then below that, you have this stratified back and forth pattern. It might make for a pretty interesting photograph. So let's see what we get. Well, it wasn't a huge long day of shooting, but uh, I made a couple of photographs and I get to end it by looking down on the Germany Valley like this. This is crazy. If you look off in the far distance, that's Dali Sads, where uh, I go frequently. So I'm freezing, I'm gonna get back in the truck. I wanna thank you for coming again. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up. Uh, leave comments in the comments section below, and uh, hope to see you next time. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. All right, well, now you saw the trip. Um, you saw the photos I made. And so let's, uh, let's go ahead and discuss them. I've got them on the monitor over here, so you're going to see me looking this way quite a bit. Um, so this first image... Um, of the canyon or rock valley um yeah anyway so this is the first image it's of the canyon with the frozen snowflakes um i think what's really solid about this image is um is its sort of ambiguity it's a little bit abstract but um I mean, you know what it is, but there's an ambiguous nature to it, which I like. Um, I also like that it's so um, lacking in contrast. So you see, you know, the one ridge come in from here. I'll, I'll try to do this the right way around. You see the, the ridge come in from your right, from camera right. And you can see there's some detail in some rocks and things like that. And then on the left, you see that hill, but it also has some rock face on it. Um, with the little trees dotting it. And I, I think that that speaks volumes about uh, what's going on in this image. Um, it speaks of nature, trees, wild. Um, but regardless, if we just want to talk form, um, those two uh, elements coming in, the hill and the ridge, they are, um, they are the solid anchors that hold this image together. But the lines themselves on these ridges also guide your eye down into the canyon, which really is the focal point of the image. And once you're down looking at the canyon, you start to notice there's a whole line of trees in the foreground, and they're super subtle. Um, you can see the verticals, you can see the branches, but they're very, very subtle. And I think this is the image we're gonna discuss um, that I'll print for this, for this video. So um, what's not working in here? I almost never have have this opinion, but I don't think anything's not working. Um, can things be better? Maybe a little more definition in the canyon walls, etc., so we can see that they're canyon walls. But uh, see, that steps right on my idea that the ambiguity of it is nice. All right, let's look at the next image. Um, okay, so this is basically the same exact image, but I uh, froze the snow in motion. Um, uh, just a contrast between these two going back and forth. I think the first one's better. I like the frozen snowflakes. I like the... Uh, mm, it's, it's, it's a weird thing to say, but I like the definition of the canyon better on the other one, even though there's not a lot of definition in either of these. I think this reveals too much of the trees in the foreground, obscures too much in the background. Um, the streaks in the sky... Mm, yeah, I don't, I don't think this image is nearly as powerful. All right, let's go to this third image. Um, this image is not my favorite. I don't think the composition held up. Um, I like that the sun is up on the right, and then you have the zigzag stratified section, which curves up 
um, to the snow in the foreground. I, I like that, and I see what I was going for, but I'm not entirely sure it worked out in the end. Um, there was a set of fences right in front of the camera. I wish I had um, pulled back the camera a little bit just so we had that foreground fence, because with the foreground fence, oh, here, let's see, if, I would guess it would have gone this way. Um, for you guys. If the foreground fence had come up this way and then the background fence had gone off, and then the zigzags would have echoed one another f far into the background and then zigzagged up to the sky. Uh, it would have been a more dynamic and uh, anchored solid composition. As it sits now, there's not enough definition in the foreground, midground, or sky to really define what's going on. Um, I don't know. It's not terrible. It's just not up to what I expect out of a photograph. What I do like about it is that crazy sky with those clouds. You can barely see them, but they're, but they're coming up just enough so that you feel like there's this, this, uh, you know, life right above the ridge line. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how much more I have to say about this. Let's move on. All right. This last one was not in the video. I shot it on my way away from Monongahela. I had gone off on a side road and found this up on a, a ridge. High, high up. A couple thousand feet higher than where I was. And uh, I really thought these trees were interesting with the rocks and the dots all through the snow. Um, I like the central grouping um, and a buddy of mine looked at it, he said why don't you get rid of the rocks and just make it all smooth snow and I, I think that would absolutely ruin this image um, I think what's going on with that central grouping and then those rocks down through the snow is something that takes your eye around on a journey through the image through the texture through the shape and brings you back up to that central grouping of the trees where the texture and shape of those keeps you bouncing around and looking at the different uh, branches and trunks and uh, then occasionally you get caught and pulled off into the snow again to see the little textures I, it's a it's a semi busy composition but i think it's a it's a it's a good composition and i think it's stable i don't think it's frenetic or anything um Overall, what's not working? Eh, I think anything that isn't working would, would end up being opinion. I don't think there's anything glaringly wrong with this image. You might disagree, and if you do, please put your comment in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, comment below, share the videos. Like I said, getting traction on YouTube is impossible without you guys. So, I appreciate you spending time with me again. And I hope to see you next week. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.